Europe is a continent of perpetual wars, shaped by and created upon them, at least historically. However, since the Second World War, this doomed place has seen virtually no armed conflicts between its major powers. Why is that so? After the Second World War, Europe was turned into a pile of rubble, as at the end of the day, the deadliest war on human history had just happened on its mainland. After such catastrophe, many visionaries wanted to create a unified Europe to prevent it from ever happening again. And those were the founding fathers of the EU as we know it today. Joseph Bech, Johann Bayen, Walter Holstein, Siko Menshold, Jean Monnet, Robert Schumann, Paul Henry Spack, Altiero Spinelli, and the three more known names as Conrad Adenauer, Winston Churchill, and Alcide de Gasperi, who were Prime Minister or equivalent to their respective country, Germany, United Kingdom, and Italy. Although many others inspired and worked on it, these eleven are considered to be the most important. In 1950, the European Coal and Steel Community, ECSC for short, was created by the six founding countries, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, France, Germany and Italy, and later, in 1957, the European Economic Community, or EEC, is created in order to boost economic cooperation between its members, due to the removal of customs duty charges. In the 60s, the economy was booming thanks to the EEC, and soon the countries would also agree in a joint control on the food production, which resulted in a food production boom, which led to a surplus of food in the region. In the 70s, the European Union saw its first enlargement 23 years after its creation, with the joining of Denmark, Ireland and the UK, changing the number of countries from 6 to 9. Soon, due to the short yet brutal Arab-Israel War of October 1973, the Union would face a small energy crisis and consequent economic problem, although this wasn't restricted to the Union. This decade also saw the fall of the last dictatorships in Western Europe, both in Portugal and Spain, in 1974 and 1975, respectively. The Union also created the EU Regional Policy, which allocated huge amounts of money to poorer areas of the Union in order to develop them and to boost jobs and infrastructures. Finally, at the end of the decade, the citizens could, for the first time, elect their members on the Parliament directly. It was also during this decade that the EU started to adopt laws to protect the environment, which widespread the notion of the polluter pace. In the 80s, there was an increase in instability within the communist countries of the Warsaw Pact controlled by the Soviet Union. In 1981, the EU sees yet another enlargement with only Greece joining. However, just five years later, in 1986, Portugal and Spain joined too, bringing up the number of members to 12. In that same year, the Single European Act is signed, which provided the basis for a six-year program aiming to sort out the problem regarding the free flow of trade across EU borders in order to create the single market we know today. Due to the before-mentioned instability within the Warsaw Pact, in 1989 the Berlin Wall was brought down and for the first time in 28 years the border between West and East Germany is destroyed, leading to the reunification of the country in October 1990. In the 90s, communism in Central and East Europe falls opening up a new frontier for the Union and, in 1993, the single market is finally completed with the four freedoms – movement of goods, people, services and money. In 1995, the Union strengthens yet another time, gaining another three members – Austria, Finland and Sweden. The Schengen Agreement created the Schengen Area, which allows people to cross internal borders of the EU without getting their passport checked and, due to this, Millions of young people since then have studied across the EU with ease, even receiving EU support. There were also two major treaties in the 90s, the Maastricht Treaty, creating the European Union, until now it was known as the EEC in 1993, and the Treaty of Amsterdam in 1999. With the turn of the millennium, communications between Europeans became easier with the internet and mobile phones. In 11 September 2001, the war on terrorism began after the New York and Washington terrorist attacks and, from that point on, European Union countries began to work closer together to fight crime. In 2004, the relations between West and East Europe are declared as healed with the biggest expansion in European Union history as no fewer than 10 members joined at the same time. Cyprus, Czechia, Estonia, 
Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Malta, Poland, Slovakia, and Slovenia, followed by Romania and Bulgaria in 2007, bumping up the members' counter to 27. However, in 2008, the global financial crisis hits the European economy really badly, leading to the Treaty of Lisbon ratified by all members coming into force in 2009, proving the EU to be a modern institution and with far more efficient working methods, reducing costs. Finally, in our current decade, as the economic crisis strokes so hard, the EU has been helping several countries to confront their economic problems and establishes the banking union in order to ensure safer and more reliable banks. In 2012, the Union receives the Nobel Peace Prize and, in 2013, Croatia becomes the 28th member. The environment is still a huge priority within the Union, which leads the world in renewable energy production, and all leaders agree to reduce harmful emissions. Due to the Russian annexation of Crimea, a stronger security policy is established. However, not everything is roses, and religious extremist groups growing in the Middle East led to unrest and subsequently war, resulting in huge numbers of refugees seeking help in Europe, forcing the EU to face the problem on how to take care of them, while also being a target of several terrorist attacks. This led to a huge growth in Euroscepticism, which made the UK announce his departure from the Union in 2017, which should be official in 2019. Leave in the comments what you think about the EU. Are you pro or against it? And should it be reformed or remain the same? Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.